Hi, I'm Ben from Hack Engineering. In this video, we're going to run through the BMW S54 engine, which is the bread and butter of what we do here at Hack Engineering. So, to run through it very briefly up here, uh, it's a cast iron block, it means it's heavy but it's also strong. 91mm bore spacing, 87mm bore size, 6 cylinder, 3246cc, and the rest at 8000 rpm. That 91mm bore spacing is kind of an evolution of the M20 engines, really where it started, but we'll go into that shortly. Um, head wise, 24 valves, finger followers, big change from the S50 that came before it, 11.7 to 1 compression ratio, twin vanos, again, we'll get to all that. Uh, seven main journal crank, again, pretty common among BMW 6 cylinder engines. Duplex chain, semi dry sump, it's a really clever design uh, that's actually copied quite a bit in other, other newer things that refer to it. Um, 91 mm stroke, and due to that high rev limit, that means it's got a very high piston speed. Uh, other than that, we'll go into it in detail over there. Right, first stop on our little tour of the S54 is the engine block. Here's one here. Uh, this is in with us for a fair bit of work. Um, we will run through some of that work that we do as our last little stop. Uh, these are the cylinders. So you've got six in line, 87 mil size. So that's the size across there. And the sort of spacing between them is 91 mil. If you take away 87 from 91, that means you've only got four millimeters here, which isn't a lot. And that is a problematic area of them, which we'll get to later. It's made from cast iron, means it's heavy, but it also means it's nice and strong. And uh, this is basically the core of the engine where everything bolted to it. Next item on our little tour is the pistons. So pistons go inside the cylinders and they're a very precise size, or rather the balls are a very precise size for them. So in this case, 87 mil, as we mentioned previously. Uh, this is a standard piston here. They are forged. This one's been through the wash maybe a couple too many times. And it's a pretty old one that is just, uh, it's actually scrap. But so they're made by Marla. The graphite coated is standard, which reduces friction. And uh, yeah, I mean, they're good. They are very good to be fair, but there are benefits to be made. If you start looking at aftermarket forged pistons, this one's from JE. It's actually very low compression. So it's got a far larger dish here than the standard one. As you can see, it's, it's far more right, raised up in the center. So to go into more detail about this JE piston, which uh, we use JE a lot in our builds. As mentioned, this one's got quite a big dish to it because it's a lower compression ratio, but most of the other features remain the same. So one of JE's key features is this asymmetric skirt. It's got a larger skirt on the thrust side of the piston, which is needed to support the, the sort of piston thrust as it goes down the bore under combustion. However, on the other side, you don't need that much support, so it's got a smaller skirt there, which means less friction. Also, in terms of reducing friction, you've got this coating here, which is JE's tough skirt coating. It's very good for uh, reducing bore wear and reducing piston wear while reducing friction. Uh, very key, and uh, it's also got these little cutouts here for measuring, which is also very important. Next on the agenda is the cylinder head. This bolts to the top of the block, right on here. And uh, basically, its main job is to control the airflow in and out of the cylinders. Um, it houses the valves, cams, spark plugs, essentially everything that's clever that goes up the top that uh, manages combustion and airflow. So this cylinder head in particular is just finished going through our in-house machine shop. So it's been refaced. This face here is what sits against the head gasket. It's extremely critical this is flat and to a good finish to ensure a good seal. Um, the 24 valves, so you've got 12 intake valves, 12 exhaust valves. Intake valves are slightly bigger than the exhaust valves, which is a fairly standard thing. Okay, so look at the head from the top side. Uh, it's fairly simple. Spark plugs go in here. Your cams run along here. Uh, under those cams on these, you have a rocker finger, which we mentioned before. So older engines have a big bucket that the cam pushes down on, which has a shim in it. Um, you use that shim to set a particular clearance between the cam and the follower. Here is one of those rocker fingers that we mentioned. So there's a shaft that sits inside the head that these rocker fingers sit on, and they can pivot like that, and that is what the cam pushes down on to then open the valve. Problem with these is, generally they're pretty good, but you do get flat spots that occur on them, and they start pitting over time, especially if there's a lack of lubrication. Um, they're, they're pretty cleverly made, they're a forged piece. Uh, we offer DLC upgrades which are done like coated which reduces friction and wear. But the final part of the head we're going to talk about is the intake side here. So S54s have individual throttle bodies which means rather than one throttle body somewhere out here, you've got one for each cylinder placed as close as possible to that valve. That means as soon as that opens you get the fastest possible throttle response. Big port, CNC machined out to a very specific shape to aid the best possible airflow into the cylinder. 
That really, really helps power. That's a really key component of naturally aspirated tuning, which BMW, BMW got it absolutely right. Okay, so this is the crankshaft. This sits essentially in the bottom of the block, and this is the bit that turns. Clutch and flywheel goes on the back here. Uh, your belt drive and front pulley and everything sits on the front here. These sprockets drive the timing chain and the oil pump chain. The timing chain is a double row duplex chain which runs off this front one here. Oil pump chain is just a single which runs off the back here. Your main bearings sit on here, uh, which these sit inside your block. And then inside the con rods you've got your big end bearings which sit on here. So these essentially rotate but don't move while the engine is running. These are obviously spinning around uh, eccentrically which is what creates a stroke. So that stroke is 91 millimetres. So the way these cranks are made, uh, they're actually forged from factory and they're also nitrided, which is why they get this bluey colour. A lot of customers come to us thinking that that's a heat issue with the engine running. Generally it's not, it is a factory formed piece. That nitriding makes them really hard, which does help them against bearing failures and things like that. No engine's perfect sadly, and the S54 is no different. It does have its problems. Magnificent engine when it works. Unfortunately it does need a fair bit of work to keep it going that way. Um, so one of them we've mentioned already is uh, the head gasket. So where the bore is particularly close to the ones next to it, you don't have a lot of meat there for the gasket to be. So as you can see here, the gasket's quite thin in between cylinders. That means unfortunately, eventually, combustion breaks through it. Uh, I don't know if you can really see there, but it will literally blow through the head gasket. Um, this one's quite bad. It's gone most between cylinders. Um, eventually it'll go through completely, it'll start off just by being middle layers. Uh, either way, it's not good then for the running of that engine and it will continue to cause issues. That'll eventually blow through, it'll start eating into the cylinder head, it'll start destroying pistons. It makes a real mess of things. So there are plenty of guides online about what to look for if your engine is starting to suffer with that. Well worth looking into it if you've got an S54 engine yourself. Make sure you get it before it's too late. Um, another big issue with them is the big end bearings. So these sit inside the con rods and they sit on this part of the crank here, um, so they're spinning around. Uh, unfortunately they just weren't that good from BMW, there's various other issues and theories on them. Um, we can cover that in a separate video to be honest. Um, but as you can see, they start wearing through. This one's actually through to the copper, really quite bad. Uh, they break up and eventually that'll just cause it to score the crank, it'll start knocking and that's the end of that. Uh, cranks can be reground to an extent, but quite often if they're really knocking badly and that's been left too late, game over, you can either find another crank or another engine. Okay, so while we're on the topic of failures, another one is various parts of the valve system. This is the valve here, it controls the camshaft timing, continuously does that, it's often compared to VTEC, which, which really is quite different. Essentially does a similar thing, but in a very different way. Um, so, first problem with these, is uh, there's a, a hub on the end of the exhaust cam. This drives a high pressure oil pump inside the Vanos. It's supposed to look like this. Eventually they end up looking like that. There's a fair bit of play within, well, between this and the disc that it drives, and eventually it'll break a piece off. That could fall into your engine and cause absolutely catastrophic failure. That's a good one. That's one that actually came out of this engine here uh, when it came in, which is now being fully refreshed, which we'll get to in a moment. So it's a close up look at the Vanos unit. It's essentially a hydraulic unit. It has two pistons in here that it pushes in and out, which then push flying shafts in the end of the cams. That affects the cam timing. It can do that continuously. It can do that however, whenever it wants. It's not on or off. It's literally any cam position, any revs, whatever it wants to do. Uh, it's all controlled by the ECU, which then controls this unit down here, which operates solenoids here, which then direct the oil flow around the unit. Problem with them is the seals inside them do get old and uh, they weren't really up to scratch from BMW in the first place. So they degrade, then you don't get a very good seal and that means that the Vanos won't give the position that ECU wants or won't give it as quickly as it wants. And that can really make the car drive with sort of hesitancy and without as much top end power as you'd want. Um, there's various other problems. We've already run through the oil pump drive issues. Um, this unit at the bottom, the control unit also breaks. Uh, there are bolts in the end of the cam that rattle loose, there are upgraded versions, all of these parts are available on our website. Um, that's about your lot really with that. They can also rattle, which is another issue, uh, which we can fix. Again, all the parts are on the website. And finally, there's a chain guide down here, which really commonly snaps in two. 
Uh, this engine when it came to us had that problem and this is actually all we could really find that was left of it. Not a lot and uh, definitely not good for it. We've kind of told you about all the basics of everything. Let's just tell you about this engine in particular. This one came into us with various issues. Uh, the owner actually bought it out of, a, out of a breaker. It was running fine. No telltales as such, but it had done, I think, 120,000 miles, something like that. Um, he's putting it in an E36, so he just wants it completely refreshed before he puts it in. I think he's very glad that he did. So the way we do things here is we'll start with the block. That'll be completely stripped down, alkali dipped, repainted, uh, also rehomed. Um, so that's got a really durable black enamel finish. Uh, then the head also completely refurbished, uh, a bit like the one we showed you on the bench. Gets completely stripped apart, uh, all the carbon, everything gets cleaned out of it, and then it all goes together, everything's measured, tested, everything it needs, and it's refaced. New valve stem seals, that sort of thing. Uh, cams go in, they're completely, you know, all the clearances are readjusted. These use the little discs to set the tightness of that. Um, due to the revs that they get to, a hydraulic follower wouldn't keep up with it. So that's the reason for that. Uh, that all gets reset. The valve's got completely rebuilt. Um, we've run through that already, all the seals and bits. Also, uh, one of our valve oil lines here. The standard ones vibrate and break down here, which causes a really horrible oil leak and causes issues with the valve working properly. Um, bottom end wise, uh, this has got the standard pistons and rods back in it. It's just a refresh. It's not anything, you know, not going for mad power or anything. It's just to keep it going for another 100,000 miles or more. Um, we've used King Racing big end and main bearings. They're our preferred option. Uh, got them in all sorts of engines from standard ones like this all the way up to turbo, supercharged, that sort of thing. Um, they're really, really durable and we absolutely love them. Something else you may have noticed on this engine is this cover plate here. Usually there's an electric air pump that pumps fresh air down the exhaust. It's all really an emissions cheat by BMW. Helps the cats warm up. For day to day running, actually it's quite noisy. Doesn't help the engine run that well when it's cold. So we get rid of that, especially in cars that are swapped, like this one's going in an E36. Uh, so this is one of our delete plates. Um, they're really simple, they go straight on. You do have to code out the ECU, but it tidies things up a lot and helps it run a little bit better. Another thing to mention on this engine is that we've used ALP studs and bolts throughout. Um, so the head is clamped down by ALP studs, which actually really helps with those head gasket issues. The standard bolts, certainly in our experience, just lose their strength over time. They start to go a little bit loose. The bolt actually stretches. It allows the head to lift. Uh, obviously, this is all by my new, my new parts, but that blows the head gasket uh, in an even faster way than, than just the struggles the head gasket has alone. So we use ARP, uh, they're a stud and a nut rather than a bolt. They work far better, we absolutely love them, we use them for everything. Same for rod bolts. Uh, so as standard, they have a, a stretch bolt. There's two different types with S54s, depending on what year they were made. This is a later one with M10 rod bolts. So we've swapped those out for some ARPs. They're far more durable, they give far more consistent rod measurement, which is really, really important for making sure that your bearings last a long time. Um, and they're a perfect combination with the King bearings we've got in here. Hopefully you've enjoyed this short video about the S54 engine. We can talk about these all day long and we're always on hand to help you with advice for your build. Also, all the parts are available on our website and we have a full machine shop in-house as well as engine building facilities. Anything you need for an S54 engine or any other BMW engine, just drop us an email or check out our website. We've got plenty more content coming, so please do subscribe to the channel and like this video. We want to keep tabs on who's enjoying what and uh, make sure we produce plenty of interesting content. I'll catch up with you next time.